Hi, today what we're going to do in this video segment is learn about multi-engine aerodynamics. To begin with, when we go out and fly a multi-engine airplane versus a single engine airplane, there's really not a whole lot uh, of things different as long as both engines are operating properly. The problem comes into play, obviously, when one engine fails and we're operating on the other engine. We can best explain this if we just look at an engine, at an airplane, as it's going down the runway, then it rotates to take off, and then we assume it has an engine failure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a basic multi-engine airplane, such as a Diamond Twin Star, and we're going to make the assumption that we're going down the runway with two good engines. Based upon this, we're going to draw two force vectors that are showing speed and direction down the runway. Now, let's assume as soon as we rotate, as soon as we rotate, the first thing that's going to happen to us, it, this is a good airplane, it hasn't lost any engines, is the force vector is going to move to the right. And the reason this happens is due to P factor. So we're going to draw it here. In fact, I'll even, even do it a little differently. I'm doing it like a dotted line here. But what happens here is when we rotate, that P factor, that force vector moves to the right due to P factor. Now what is P factor? What's the basics of that? Remember, when, when I increase the angle of attack on airplane, be it a single engine or multi-engine propeller airplane, the downward propeller blade, the downward blade, has a higher angle of attack than the upper blade. When it has a higher angle of attack, it, it essentially also has a higher result in velocity. So what happens is the force, rather than acting through the propeller hub, the spinner, it moves to the right. <clears throat> well, the FAA's Flying Information Handbook tells us it moves to the edge of the propeller. So, step one, going down the runway, I got force vectors right here where I would expect. As soon as I rotate, as soon as I give it an angle of attack, those force vectors step to the right. And that causes a lot of, a lot of need for rudder. Some airplanes more than others. Twin Cessna 310, not too bad. Uh, DA-42, tremendous amount of right rudder, much more than you would ever imagine going into it. Now, both of these engines are also, uh, they're also rotate the same way. So we have a left engine that's being a critical engine, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. So we've got a normal airplane going down the runway. As soon as we rotate, force vector moves to the right due to P factor. All right, now let's assume we lost an engine. What happens immediately when we lose that engine right here is you can think of it as you now have a drag vector coming through the left engine. And we're assuming we're losing the left engine, which is the critical engine on a Diamond Twin Star. And you can think that over here, what just happened is the P factor moved farther to the right. Well, here's the thing, folks. I don't really know if it truly moves farther to the right or if it grows bigger. And you're going to find this funny, maybe, nor do I really care. What I care about as a pilot is I know I have a tremendous amount of more force creating torque, a tremendous amount of more torque on the right engine taking me around this way. And this drag on this engine, of course, is going to pull me more around this way. <clears throat> so, we go down the runway with a normal force vector, we rotate with a normal airplane, and we get P factor, downward blade on both engines, creating more lift, which results in a higher result in velocity on that, on that engine. Now what happens is we lose an engine. We get drag here, and because we get drag here, the angle of attack increases. Because our velocity slows down. Since our velocity slows down, our angle of attack increases. When our angle of attack increases, we have a higher amount of P factor on this right engine. The FAA tells us, the FAA tells us that when we lose an engine on a multi-engine airplane, we have two problems. We have a control
control problem and a performance problem. The reason we have a control problem, really, is, is two big reasons. One is it's yaw. The airplane is going to yaw, assuming we lose the left engine, and the left engine is the critical engine. The airplane is going to yaw to the left. And the reason it's going to yaw to the left, again, is because we have drag on the left engine, and we have increased P factor on the right engine. So the drag on the left engine is pulling it around this way, and the increased P factor causing an increase in torque on the right engine is pulling it that way too. That's why we have yaw. The second problem we have is roll. So the airplane wants to roll, wants to yaw left due to what? Due to increase in, in right engine P factor. And it wants to yaw left due to an increase in left engine drag. Okay. So those are the raw, those are the, the yaw issues. Now, what are the roll problems I have? Well, the airplane wants to roll to the left. Why does it want to roll to the left? Well, on this engine, we still have induced, we still have induced airflow of the right wing. On this engine, we don't have that. The propeller, there is no propeller blast giving us lift over that wing. So it wants to, it wants to roll to the left due to uh, a decrease in induced flow. So, so it also wants to turn around and roll left because a yawing airplane, excuse me, a yawing airplane is a rolling airplane. If we tend to yaw this airplane, this wing will see a higher angle attack than this, and it will tend to roll. So the control problems are twofold, yaw and roll. Yaw due to increased P factor, which gives us increased torque on the right wing, and yaw because of increased drag on the left wing. Roll is due to a lack of induced flow of the left wing, and roll is also caused because a yawing airplane is a rolling airplane. If we yaw it, it will tend to roll. Okay, so that's that's our, our control issues. The FAA says again that we have a control issue and a performance issue.